Okay, so we're here. We're going to be talking today a bit about cash flow. So I can see everyone is coming online. That's fantastic. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. So today is all about cash flow. And like I said, I'll get a presentation out to everyone, um, a copy of the recording, a copy of the presentation, and some other material which you will receive in um, by email later on today. Just out of curiosity, um, how many of you attended a few weeks ago when I did the budget? Just in the chat box, press one if you if you came a few weeks ago to the home budget one. Yeah, I remember Kieran, you were there. Fantastic. Okay, good. Right. Okay. So some people missed it. Some people there. Okay. So not a problem. Yeah. I just wanted to have an idea um, that you know we were who was there, and that was all about home things. Today we're going to be looking at business sort of ideas. And so we're going to move on to the business cash flow. So what's the idea? So let me share. Um, let me share with you um, my, a little presentation which I've got. Let's see where I can find it now. Yes, here it should be. Okay. So that's our um, presentation for today. We will sort of um, get this sorted out very soon. Um, um, and I'm going to keep an eye on the chat. Um, yeah, absolutely. We'll get everyone's going to get a recording of this one. And anyone who missed the previous session about household budgets, um, personal budgets, etc., I will send a link to you again with those for anyone who missed it. Not a problem. We're not going to repeat any of that today. Today is a bit more about business side of things, and we will do so. So first of all, right? Let's just have a look. How many people um, believe that um, have had a go at looking at cash flow? How, how many people have actually put pen to paper and tried to work out their business cash flow? Just in the chat box, just press, you know, just say yes or no. So I just have an idea of what's going on. So, okay. So Kieran's had a go at it. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, after that's the answer that most people say, say to me um, that they do struggle. Um, with cash flow, right? Um, yeah, okay. So I've got I've got the message. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, people do struggle with cash flow. It is one of those things. So what are we going to be doing today? So let's just go through what we're going to be doing today. <clears throat> we're going to be looking at is cash flow important? Okay. We're then going to look at some uh, top four cash cash flow issues. We're then going to go into preparing a cash flow. I'm going to break it down to tell you how you can create and prepare a cash flow for all your business. And um, we're also going to be um, looking at ways that you can improve your business. And then we're going to be looking at finally um, a little session about finding the finance, but I'll turn it to the bank loan. Okay. So everyone knows that, yeah, we can always go to the bank and ask for a bank loan, but what are the alternatives in finding some finance? So that's the idea that we're going to be doing today. And um, hopefully we'll cover that in the next two hours. And um, any questions, or whatever, please keep using the chat box and we will try and do this. I'm going to try and make this as practical as possible. Um, and I know that, um, a lot of people, um, you know, struggle with um, numbers. It puts a lot of people off. I'm an accountant, so I do like numbers. But again, even with an accountant, being myself, I have to be honest, I've struggled with cash flow at times when I thought, oh, I didn't realize that I didn't have this time. There was some money that I needed to pay, etc. cetera. Um, I've had those issues. So we've all been through that. And so this is what it's all about. And these are the sort of things which I wish that someone had taught me um, a lot earlier. And I know that a lot of people hate numbers, and although I love them, but honestly, believe me, we're going to make your life easier. I'm going to show you that you can do a cash flow and you don't need to be scared about the numbers. You will have the support, okay? You will be able to do this. Okay, so let's make an idea. So cash flow, that's what we're going to talk about. Who's heard of Peter Drucker? Just mention in the chat box if you've heard of the name Peter Drucker. Who's heard of him? Okay, a few people have heard of him. Good. Okay, so he's a big management guru. Okay, so he's one of the best known UK management gurus that you're going to find. Huge consultant, written 
tons of books about um, business and finances, etc. Really thinks um, and things. And anyone who's doing some, any sort of business studies at university, you'll obviously have come across some of his ideas because that's what is taught, um, and um, you're examined on those his ideas. But this is what he said about cash flow. Hope that you can all hear that, see that. Believe that profit is what matters most in new enterprise, but profit is secondary. Cash flow matters the most. So that's someone who um, a huge guru is telling us that, look, so many of us concentrate on profit, profit, profit. And the most important bit is cash flow. Now, let's have a look at what someone else said. Anyone heard of this phrase? Anyone, anyone remember who said this? Never take your eyes on the cash flow because, because it is a lifehood blood of a business. Who said that? Someone already famous said that. And when I tell you who said it, you'll all know him. No one's heard of no one's heard this one before? No. Nope. Ooh, Naveed said it's Warren Buffett. It's not Warren Buffett, close. Someone UK based. Okay. So Richard Branson. Okay, never take your eyes off the cash flow because it is the lifeblood of a business. And that's so true. Because the number one reason, okay, that businesses just don't succeed or they fail is because of cash flow. That is the one reason why businesses fail. It's all because of cash flow. It isn't any other reason. Number one reason for businesses failing is cash flow. Some of the biggest um, businesses which have failed recently, like for example, Debenhams, it was all a case that they didn't have the cash flow to service their debts, etc. Ooh, someone's there. So. Okay, so um, we'll try and keep everyone on mute, and you'll be able to chat to me via the via the um, chat box. Okay, so that's what we'll be trying to do. So that's what Richard Branson said. So it's the number one reason why businesses fail which is why I wanted to do this session, because if you can master cash flow, you can make your business success. You're eliminating the number one reason for businesses failing. And that's the whole idea of doing this cash flow. So if I go back to my presentation. Now, question for you guys, does your business have enough cash? I remember this is what it's all about. Does your business have enough cash to survive? How many people have, have struggled with cash flow? Just put it in the chat box. I'm trying to make this interactive as possible because that way it doesn't get boring and it, it keeps me that you're actually listening to me. You're not all just dozed off somewhere, right? So um, how many people have actually struggled with cash flow? I've told you my own story. Um, I'm an accountant and even then sometimes I thought I, thought I had the money and I thought, ooh, right? How many people have had that sort of thing that they've struggled to pay things on time? They just didn't have enough money, even though the business has been profitable. Just put it in the chat box, yes, no, et cetera. And be honest, because this is what we're trying to do, we're trying to, um... yeah, okay, so we're getting some yeses in. Absolutely. You know, this is where, where we are, and this is why cash flow is so important. Okay, so, um... yeah, so we need cash flow. All... Let me go back, sorry. Okay, cash flow. Seriously, it is so important because especially when you're a small business, and now we even know large businesses, they have similar sort of problems with cash flows. But we need to make sure that, you know, like we do have enough cash because if you don't have enough cash, there are going to be problems. Yeah. Now, why are there going to be problems with cash flow? Because we need to do, we if you can work out why and when you're going to have a cash flow problem you can do something about it. And we'll talk about this a bit later on, why you can do something and how it will work, et cetera. Okay, but we need to identify, this is why we need to do, we need to look at cash flow, need to do some preparation for cash flow so we can anticipate when we're going to have um, cash flow problems. And once we have those problems, we will be able to do something about it. Okay, and more importantly, we've got to make sure that we pay our suppliers, our contractors, if you have employees, those on time, because obviously we can't delay their sort of payments. Um, and so that's why cash flow is important because if you can't pay people on time, you will get a bad reputation. They will take you to court and it will cause problems. 
So that's why doing something, why we need to really look into doing a cash flow, why it's so important. Okay, so what happens in the short to medium term? Any ideas? Think about it. In the short to medium term, right, what do you think your business will do if you have a cash flow problem? Just think about it and put it in the chat box if you've got an idea of in the short to medium term, if you have a cash flow problem, what would actually happen? We're not talking about the long term. We know the long term, if you have a cash flow problem, is dire. But in the short to medium term, what do you think would happen? Just give it some thought and give it a minute or two and try and share um, what's going to happen in the short term. Would you think you'll be able to survive in the short to medium term if you have a cash flow problem? Okay, Christine, you're absolutely fine. You're going to lose um, good contacts. It's got, it does affect the people. Um, yes, absolutely, Angela. You're not going to be able to trade and pay people. Um, and Suzanne, you've hit the neck. You, you will be able to survive, but you won't be able to thrive. Because what will happen when you do have cash flow problems and we don't look at it properly, um, what will happen in the short to medium term, you will survive. Okay, but you, it's, it's just survival it's going to cause you problems because all you're going to be doing is that you're going to be delaying making payments. You won't pay your employees um, on time. Okay. You won't pay your suppliers on time. Yeah. You're going to delay this. And Stephen, you're absolutely right. Um, you are going to be losing, you will, people will lose trust with you. You will lose um, some customers or suppliers. Um, you may all have some disgruntled employees. And so it's not great but a lot of people in the short to medium term will survive, okay? Um, but having survived that, it causes, you're absolutely right, uh, Angela, it's going to cause you a lot of stress, which you can do without, which is why doing these exercises that we're going to do today is so vitally important because you don't want the stress because this stress does cause you absolute havoc in your life. It's going to cause... Um, you know, a lot of pain and a lot of anxiety, which you really could do with. And that's why with a little bit of planning, we can eliminate cash flow problems. And that's what our aim is to do today. Okay, so thinking about cash flow problems, right? Um, what are the most common cash flow problems? Again, I'm going to ask you to think about it. Think about what you've done in your business. Where do you think are your cash flow problems? So just put it on the chat box. Um, I am looking at them. So just have a look at the chat box and tell me um, where, where in your business you've suffered from paying cash flow issues. Yeah, getting paid late. Yeah, absolutely correct. Yeah, not having a buffer money to get you over that. Absolutely fine. Keep thinking, guys. Oh, yeah, good one there. No credit control strategy. Absolutely good. Christine, you hit on the head. Overheads is one of the biggest reasons for um, cash flow problems. Okay, so we're going to move on. Yeah, no control of expenses. Cost us absolutely brilliant. So let's have a look at, I'm going to look at the top few things that we sort of high. Um, are causing the biggest cash flow problems. So overhead expenses, absolutely. It is a um, huge, huge um, cash flow problem. So when we talk about overhead expenses, these are expenses which we have to pay anyway without us. It does, it's not related to our sales. So there's something that's related to our sales, like my purchases or things that I pay according to sales. But there are some things which are, we have to pay. Um, what are those things? So things like rent. It doesn't matter whether I have zero sales or a lot of sales. I need to pay my rent. I need to pay my utilities, et cetera. Um, I need to pay my rates, et cetera. Absolutely. Those sort of things which we have to pay all the time, they're overhead expenses. And they cause a lot of problems because we have to pay them. And if you have a lot of or high overhead expenses, you do your sort of point where you break even is a lot higher. And therefore, you need to review them. Now, solution to them, right? What is a solution? Okay. But before we get into the system, we've got to remember that overhead expenses is something that we really can't eliminate. Okay. They're always going to be there. 
okay and the, we have to pay them every month or every week or every quarter etc they're they're going to cause us problems but we have to do this right correctly and we have to plan for them we should know what we're going to be spending just like we did when we did the personal budget we looked at um what actually happens okay and so therefore um same sort of figure we should know what we're paying how we're paying it etc when when things are due now overhead expenses okay what are the solutions for overhead expenses think about it you've got some overhead expenses um every business has overhead expenses so how can we make sure that we, this does not cause us um a cash flow problem Yeah, and we want to avoid the bailiffs, etc., because we know that um, it's an it, they'll just everything that if you get the bailiffs coming, they charge you for even coming to knock on your door, etc., or write a letter to you. That gets more and more. Okay, Suzanne, you're you're on the ball here. Um, absolutely cheaper offers. Set side, or oh, Christine, you've said set aside some capital. Jenny, absolutely plan early. Absolutely great. Um, Okay, so let's have a look at some solutions for this. Absolutely. Home office is the way to go. <laughs> right, okay. Good, good answer there. I'll come to that one in a minute. Okay, overheads, right? So we do have some overheads, right? Um, okay, so the thing is that what we really need to do, okay? So remember, we can't cut these back, right? We can't cut them back, right? Otherwise, you know, if we, if we, if we say we're not going to go on a cheaper internet rate, cheaper telephone tariff, et cetera, it's not going to work. Okay. So we need to be careful of what we actually do. Okay. So we, we really can't cut back too much. What we can do though, is what someone has mentioned. I think it is there is have a look at Suzanne mentioned this before earlier. If we can find cheaper options. Okay. So it really is a case of finding out what did we spend comparing it are we spending the right amount? Okay. Can we get a cheaper telephone line? Can we pay a cheaper internet? Can we, um, are we pay, are we on the right tariff for our rates or council taxes, etc.? So therefore we can talk to the council. Um, if we're doing a lot of things on the postage is Royal Mail, the cheapest option. There are other options out there. Let's compare. Okay. If we, can we, um, it's all these sort of things, obviously. And um, when you have overheads, you know what they're going to be and you should be able to budget for them um, on a monthly basis as well. And therefore you can say how much is going to be. The second thing, um, second um, biggest problem that a lot of people have is, and again, many of you came up to this, is that when you have people who don't pay you on time, okay? So as a small business, um, you know, you sometimes people don't pay you cash straight away. They will pay you in... Um, they will pay you later. Some people will insist on paying you 30 days later, 60 days later. So you've done the work, you sent them off, you're waiting for payment. Okay, that payment is going to come in 30 days or 60 days. But in the meantime, you've still got to pay everyone on time. You can't delay your payments to 30 days and 60 days. So your, your bills still have to be paid on time every month, but your money is coming in 30 days afterwards. So how do you get away with doing this? Okay. Um, Oh, Suzanne's already setting up, giving us some great examples. Absolutely. So you can, absolutely. So you can ask for, um, do a pro forma invoice, ask for a deposit of some sort up front and have the rest. So you get some sort of thing. Absolutely. That's the sort of thing that you need to do. Schedule, um, et cetera. But, okay. So you, we've been through this. Okay. So, one of the, and you can do all sorts of things, the things that you're suggesting, absolutely you can do. One of the things that I suggest that you may want to do this is that, look, you can shift things, people, give them an incentive to pay you earlier, right? But don't do this for everyone because you will lose money, right? But you can offer for some people, you should, you could offer something like a 1% or 2% discount and ask them, can you pay me within 10 days or within seven days? And you know, some of the bigger companies, they actually take that on board. So don't be scared of saying that, look, um, if I give you 1%, 2% discount, would you be able to pay me within seven days and 10 days? Some people will take that offer up. So you get your money earlier, okay? But don't offer this 
to everyone. Look, look at the clients that you've got. Some because some people will pay you. You know, when you send them an invoice, they'll pay you the next day. Yeah. So you don't need to offer this sort of things for them. It's only for those people who you know that they've already asked you. We're gonna we get your invoice. We're gonna pay you after twenty eight days. They're gonna pay you after thirty days, etc. That sort of thing that you can offer them a discount. The third um, biggest issue with cash flow is when you have too much stock, right? Is this is where some people who sell on eBay or your factory or you've got a warehouse and you've bought products, those products are sitting in your garage, sitting in your storeroom, et cetera, because you've got to sell them before you get money in. Um, obviously, um, that needs to be looked into. Now, this is a bit more difficult, okay? So you can't just say, I'm going to have no stock, right? Because obviously, if you sell a product or whatever, you do need to have stock. Because if you don't hold the stock, what will happen? Customer will go somewhere else. Yeah, so you need to have some stock. But you don't have to have too much stock. What you really need to do is you've got to look at when, how long does it take the stock to, takes to get to me? When will my customers order? How soon do I need to reorder? So if I know that I'm going to sell 10 items of this product in this week, and it's going to take, I don't need to buy 20. I would only buy 10 for the beginning of the week and then buy 10 for next week. Okay, so that sort of thing. So, but you've got to, you've got to monitor. It really requires some sort of system whereby you monitor your stock levels. You know exactly what stock you've got. And it really is because um, I know we live in the age of IT, but not all of us en embrace IT for stock solutions, et cetera. And I've been to visiting on my visits to clients, et cetera. Um, you know, I'm an accountant, so I do visit. And those people who sell, you know, stock, you'll be surprised that, you know, oh, we bought 100 of these. They were dead cheap. Um, they've been here. Oh, we thought they were a great buy. They still are a great buy, but we're not selling them. Um, they're stuck in the office. They're in the corner. Um, they're worth 6,000 pounds. Yeah. There's no point in that being there. You've got 6,000 pounds worth of stock. You need to shift that stock. So if you keep an idea of what levels you have and you know you've got some slow moving stock, et cetera, it may be worth you considering, actually, you know what? We need to sell this at cost or a little bit of profit because that money that is tied up in that stock. Okay, but obviously for key sort of stock items, you don't want people because... Um, you don't want people going somewhere else. So you've got to have enough stock as well. Okay. So Christine, you've asked the right question. Um, you said for our industry, local authorities take long time to pay, sometimes 60 days to pay. Okay. So what is there a solution for this? You can offer them. Um, you can say to them, look, can I have my payment within 30 days? We'll offer you a discount. That's one option you do have. The other question, the thing that you could do, you could look at something called invoice factory or invoice discounting. This is where companies will um, take over your invoice. And when you send the invoice to your, the person that you need to send, send it to for your payment, um, that company will give you, um, you know, 80% of, of the thing, of the money up front. They'll keep 20% um, and they'll pay you the 20% when they collect the money in 60 days, but at least you're getting some money up front. So there are solutions, but it's all a case of planning that, look, this invoice is going out. I know that I'm not going to get money in until 60 days. How much money do I need in those 60 days to survive? Do I have enough money coming in? And if it isn't, and if there is, there are alternatives out there. Okay, too much bad debt. And this is a really, really a big problem for um, smaller companies. Okay, how many people have had bad debt issues? Someone who's, and bad debt is someone someone where hasn't really paid you, okay? They don't, they don't pay you on time, et cetera, okay? So how many people have had a bad debt? You've done the service, you've sent, the, sent it to them, and you just waited for them to pay, and they're not paying you. How many people have had this issue? Yeah, just put in the chat box if you've had this sort of issue, bad debt. Yeah, okay. So this is what happens, right? Seriously. And it is a huge problem. 
Yeah, because obviously it's an obvious thing to a cash flow because you've done the work, you've done, you've sold on the product, um, you waited for them to pay you, that money doesn't come in, they keep promising you, I'll pay you today, pay you tomorrow, do, 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 and it goes past. Yeah, it just doesn't happen. Okay, so obviously the, the, this is a big, big problem, and it is a bigger problem for the smaller businesses rather than the larger businesses. Only the larger businesses do suffer from bad debt, Okay. Okay, so bad debt. Right, what's the answer to a bad debt? Anyone got any ideas of how to overcome bad debt other than don't give credit? Okay, so some because um, sometimes we can't, we have to do, we have to give the 30 days, 60 days. Um, what's the answer to a bad debt solution? Anyone come across any solutions? Anyone taking any sort of action against anyone not paying them? Put it in the chat box if you've done anything about bad debt. Aftab, is that the slide you wanted? Okay, so who, anyone's got a bad debt experience? Share it with me if you send it. Okay, so we've got someone send it to the creditors. Keep pursuing sending reminders. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Keep on going. Now, how, any ideas of how, okay, so we get in there, continue contacting debtors, absolutely. How would you avoid bad debt? So let's turn it around. Let's say, how would you avoid being at a situation where you've got bad debt, what can you do to eliminate it? Some great suggestions, guys. You're, you're really doing well here. Absolutely fantastic. Um, Angela, some fantastic uh, um, ideas, and absolutely agree with you. Um, Jenny's come up with getting a professional agent. Um, oh, the, you're all coming in. Okay, Angela, you're right. Don't trade with bad debts. Christina, ask for deposits. Regular interaction with clients. Talking directly to accounts. They try to be helpful. Absolutely. They're the sort of things that we need to do, okay? But I'm going to suggest to you that even before you sort of give credit to anyone, okay, and any potential customer, look, these days you can do something called a credit check. Yeah, and that's what I would suggest you do before you sort of give everyone, anyone, any sort of credit, do a, do a credit check on them and you'll find out whether they are like, are they good debtors or are they bad debtors? Because someone who's, who's persistently bad at paying, you will find that they will be doing this again and again and again, and it'll be on a credit reference and we just don't do it. And a lot of agencies these days who will do a credit reference for you, it'll cost you about 10 pounds, Okay. But it will tell you about um, their, their history um, with dealing with businesses, etc. And what you want, really want to do, you only want to have customers who have a good credit. Okay, someone who doesn't, who pays on time, and anything when they've delayed making payments on time, it'll be on their credit history. If they've got um, CCJs, that's county court judgments against them, that'll be on their credit history. And these sort of things you can join for about £10. Yeah, that's the information you'll get about 10, it'll cost you about £10. You get that information. Now, I know, I realize, okay, that by doing a credit search on your customers, you're going to lose some sales. I agree on that. You're going to lose some customers. Yeah, and this is where small businesses find it very difficult to say, no, I'm, I, I'm, you know, do a credit search and to say no to a potential customer. But really, do you want a customer you do the work for, you sell the products for, and then they don't pay you? Okay? You don't want that. Okay? So really, honestly, you don't want to deal with those sort of customers who've got a bad credit history. Yes, it may cost you some sales in the short term, but it will save you a big headache in the long term. Yeah, and that's what really what you need to do. Okay, so everyone good so far? Everyone okay on the ball? Everyone okay? So now we're going to come to the numbers bit. Okay, I know that many of you um, don't like numbers. Okay, and I understand that. And we, I'm going to make sure that today 
I'm going to try and prove as an accountant that numbers you don't need to be afraid of. So I don't want you to switch off. We are going to be looking at next section is going to be how to prepare your cash flow. Now you from after this session, I am going to send all of you a spreadsheet. Okay. But I'm going to break it down today. I'm going to show you two live examples of how a business can use cash flow to plan for the future, et cetera. These, both of these examples that I'm using today are real life examples. Yeah, of something that's um, happened in the recent past, um, both businesses, and I've just shortened it to for the preparation of this presentation, but they are real life examples. I know that I asked before how many people, and a lot of you said that you've tried it, never tried it, etc. But I'm going to try and decipher for you how to prepare a cash flow, and believe me you can do this okay and i'm going to and i'm going to at the end of this i'm hoping that most of you will say actually those numbers don't look daunting to me now okay so most people when they see a massive spreadsheet say Ugh, I, this is not for me okay and i know that we're all we, we, we've all been there okay so i'm going to be telling you explaining to you how you put your cash flow together right and don't worry I, and i know that the, i wish this was taught more and more because this is um the sort of things that you really can't understand from books it's difficult to do this so i'm going to show you a live sort of demonstration how to put cash flow together and um hopefully this will work okay so the important thing is right elaine yeah she's the editor and the author of a book called the million dollar one person business OK, there's only really one way to address cash flow crunches and it's planning so you can prevent them in advance. That is what we need to do today. And this is what we're going to be looking at today. That bit there. OK, there is really only one way to address. OK, so let's have a look at this example. OK, so I'm going to show you how to do this. And afterwards, you will get um, a, a copy of this of the spreadsheet, which I'm going to be using. And um, you've been there. So this person um, scenario is that they buy, they're buying a running business. They're buying a dental practice. OK, so this dental practice cost them um, 500,000 pounds. The previous accounts show that they had a profit of 152,000. So the person who bought this practice said, well, they've got 152,000 pounds profit. Um, I'm, I know that I need to pay my loan back of 500,000. That's going to cost me about 6,000 pounds a year. So um, take 72,000 off the 152. It leaves me about 70 odd thousand pounds, um, which um, I should be OK. I, I can live on that. No, not a problem. This is where they were moving to. OK, so then we started to say that actually, what is the cash flow? Are we going to have enough cash to pay this loan back? And how much money do we actually need? So this dental practice is a fairly good dental practice. It sales every month are 34,000 pounds. Okay, so it has sales of 34,000 pounds every month. Okay, out of those sales of 34,000 pounds, 4,000 pounds are people who pay by card in the month, okay? and they just pay it. So the person, the dental practice sees 4,000 pounds. And there's another 30,000 pounds, which is on a plan. The plan gets paid 30 days later. Okay, so you do the work and then they're part of a plan. The insurance or the plan pays to the dental practice 30 days later. Okay, so um, that's where we are. So spreadsheet. So at the top, we got the 12 months, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12. Okay, so each month, what happened here? So remember, the cash received was 4,000, and then we get 30,000 a month later, 30 days later. So month one, right, we got 4,000 pounds cash. The other 30,000 came in month two, okay? So month two, we had 4,000 pounds cash, and the rest of the sales came in on free. So I've color coded it for you so you can see that what actually happens is that the cash, remember we're looking at what the cash is. We're not looking at sales. Sales are 34,000, but the actual cash received in the first month is 4,000 pounds. 
and the other 30,000 of the first month sales comes in month two, the cash we receive in month two. Okay, so this is what actually happens. Yeah, so if we do this, the accounts show that you actually have sales of 408,000 pounds. The actual cash received is only 378,300, of 378,000. Okay, and that's because the 30,000 pound sales in month 12 are received the following month. Okay, so there's always a 30,000 pounds debtor. So sales, yes, were 408,000 pounds. The actual cash received was 378,000 pounds. Okay, so that bit, okay, I think you can all do that. Okay, you can have a look at what your sales are, estimate them, what you, what you think your sales are going to be. And then you start putting them in a monthly basis at a spreadsheet, which you will get. Okay, so you don't need to design a spreadsheet. That bit you can do, right? Okay, you, you can do this. It's not difficult, right? I'm sure that anyone, has, has everyone understood that? Anyone got any questions so far before I move on to the expense side of things? Just put in the cash in the chat box if you've understood what I've just done there. You looked at the sales and you split the sales according to when the cash was actually received because we're looking at cash received. Okay, good. All right, so we're getting a lot of yeses. Thank you. So you all understood what happened there. So next, we have some expenses. Same, we're looking at this dental practice. This dental practice pays out for associates materials about £12,000 a month. He has salaries of £5,000 a month. This person has decided that Right in month one, he's going to spend £4,000 on some new equipment. The dental practice also pays for advertising £500 per month. Okay, so we have associates, some materials, salaries, equipment, advertising. All estimated, looking at previous accounts. This person has said the only exception is that there's new equipment in month one. So we have a spreadsheet. Okay. We put down the side what they are, associates, the materials, Salaries, equipment, advertising. Months at the top each month. Okay, remember, the sources got paid 12,000. So every month has 12,000 in it. Salaries, 5,000. You put the salaries in at 5,000. Remember, equipment was just one off in month one of 4,000 pounds. And then we had advertising of 500 pounds. Spreadsheet, numbers go in. Yeah, just estimated what you want to spend or what you know that you're going to spend. Absolutely. Okay, so numbers, easy. They look daunting, but you can do this. Moving forward, premises. Okay, there's some premise expense about £300 a month. There's a rent deposit that you have to pay a deposit of £3,000, and then they need to pay £3,000 um, every month. Um, there are some legal and professional fees before they start at £4,000, which they need to pay. Um, for their CQC and other things that need to be in place. So they've had to pay some right before they start about £4,000 legal fees. So spreadsheet again. Okay, so we have our premises costs, remember? 1 to 12 at the top. Okay, premises were £300 a month. Put it in the spreadsheet, not a problem. Rent, remember, we now rent, we paid one deposit. So that goes right at the beginning, not in month one before we start. Then we paid £3,000 every month. And we had some legal and professional before we started at £4,000. Yeah, you put that in a spreadsheet. You can all do this. Yeah, you really can. When I break it down like this, you can, you can do this. And then we've got some more expensive. We've got some sundry of £300. They've got my fees. Obviously, I need to get paid. So £200 a month. Thank you. And then... Um, some loan repayments we talked about at, at the beginning. So we can do this, okay? So we just went through the spreadsheet. Now, how many people think they can do this? Yeah, well, the way I've broken it down to you, we've gone through, we've broken it down, okay, into expenses, and then you, you can just put this into a spreadsheet, what you believe are going to be the expenses. I remember it's a spreadsheet, so you can figure about when numbers is, you don't need to add it up, okay? so. You can do this. Yeah. Okay. So numbers don't look daunting. Good. I'm making, I'm, I'm glad that so many people are saying that look, you are understanding what we're trying to do here. And there's something that you can do. Now, when you've put all of those figures together, what do you end up with? You end up with this. 
Now that looks daunting, okay? But everything on that sheet was what I've just done with you today. The top bit, receipts were all the cash bit that we did, okay? We broke it down. The payment section, I broke it down into three little bits, okay? So we did associates, salaries, equipment on the first one. Then we did advertising, premises, and rent. And then we did the legal sundry account. We did all of that, okay? But that is your cash flow spreadsheet. Now, you can do this when I've broken it down. How many people, and we're going to look at this in a minute, but how many people believe that they can do this now, okay? How many people are willing to have a go at this? If you've got a spreadsheet like this in front of you, how many people say that now they can make a go of this? Okay, Peggy, Christine, excellent. Naveed, excellent. Yeah, Stephen, good, great. Okay, that is your cash flow, okay? So now let's have a look at this. Remember, this person thought that he was going to be making um, about 70 odd thousand pounds at the beginning. Okay, so month 12, right? So what do we have? Our closing cash balance is only 39,400 pounds. Can you all see this at the end? In month 12, the closing cash balance is 39,400. What do we expect it to be? 70 odd thousand pounds. So why is it not 70 odd thousand pounds that we expected it to be? Well, the first thing was that um, here, Remember, the cash flow, the cash receipt is only 378. There's 30,000 pounds that's going to come in, okay? But so it's not in the cash flow. So we've got 39,400. Add another 30,000 pounds to it, you got your 69,400. Obviously, he's then had 7,000 pounds. He's had to pay for rent um, and some legal expenses, the deposit and the legal. And then he's also he's had the four thousand pounds worth of equipment he did in in year in month one. Those sort of things added up. So he was he was expecting seventy odd thousand pounds, but he's ended up with thirty nine thousand four hundred. Okay, so at the end of month twelve, he still ended up with about forty odd thousand pounds, which is great. The problem is now let's have a look at this cash flow. So this what you've got is the bottom bit at the bottom here. So what we've added up the income, we've added up the expenses, and we've come to this summary here. So before we begin, we need £7,000. Yeah, but why do we need the £7,000? And that's for the rent deposit of £3,000. And we've got legal and professional of £4,000. Okay, £7,000 we need um, before we start this. Okay, so that's £7,000. But then in month one, yeah, let me go back. Sorry, in month one, okay, our sales were 34,000, but we only received 4,000 pounds. Okay, remember it's cash, but the cash that we need to pay out is 31,300 because we still need to pay the associates 12,000 pounds. They've done their work. We need to pay our lab bills as well. We need to pay our staff. We decided to buy some equipment, and if we sign for it, we need to pay for it. We've paid for some advertising. We need to pay for our premises costs. Yeah, we need to pay for our rent. And we've got a little bit of other expenses. And we need to pay the loan. And obviously, you've got to pay me. And so, therefore, um, there is £27,300 going, and 31300 going out this month. Money coming in is only £4,000. Okay, so we've got a deficit of 34300 Okay, so can you imagine now, if we do this forward, this person only becomes cash rich after month seven. Okay, up to month six, he's cash deficit. So he needs in total 34,300 pounds, which is what's showing on there. Because if we had 34,300, all of that thing will be eliminated to zero. The greens would go into zero. Okay, but we've got, because we haven't got that, means that we have to find 34,300 pounds. Now, that's 34,300 that we need to survive, okay, to get through this cash crisis at the beginning of the business. But then also, this is where, where we, this last session we did about um, how much money you need to earn on the personal budget, etc. We need to take money out of this for ourselves. 
but we haven't put that in the cash flow anywhere at the moment. Okay. But we know that this is what it is. Now at month 12, he's got 40,000 pounds, but he needs to get through the first six months in order to get to this. The first six months are always going to be tough. Now, by knowing this is what we need knowing. Now, this person then, when we did this calculation, said, okay, that's fine. I can end up with 40,000 pounds, but it does mean that I need another 34,300 pounds to try and do this. So let's try and raise that 34,300 from my savings, from other play things. Um, and therefore, I know that I can survive this. It's not going to be a case of I take this business on and three months down the line, I'm going to be closing down because I can't. Now, this person also then, because they knew that they need 34,300, they, they could ask for a, a, the loan could be extended, get, go back to them or look for other means of some savings, et cetera, where they could cover that money. So the business can generate money of 39,400. Then obviously year two, we don't have these expenses at the beginning. You're always getting the 34,000 pounds in. It makes a lot of success. And then you can start thinking of, you know, doing something else, building the practice up, getting more income in with relatively keeping the expenses relatively same. That's the sort of thing that this is where cash flow. So on paper, remember, when we started this exercise, this business had a profit of 152,000 pounds. Okay. And we expected paying the loan back that we will still be 70,000 pounds um, profit and so everything was looking rosy the reality is and this is why cash flow is so important you end up with 39,400 pounds but the first five months particularly are going to be tough months so there's going to be some we are we know that we're going to have five tough months especially month one is going to be the toughest because we know that that's the one that's really causing us the issues we need to find some money right at the beginning. Now, if you can find that money right at the beginning, you've eliminated all the problems. Yeah, and this is why cash flow is so vital. So um, what you're going to get from me, okay, is going to be a spreadsheet. Similar to the one for those people who came to the, um, the personal one, you're going to have a lot longer, a bigger spreadsheet. Um, it is a spreadsheet like this, so it's a comprehensive spreadsheet, and you'll put your estimates in. So this is what we've done today. This is what we thought we would get, okay? The 4,000, 30,000. You put all that in for your businesses. You, that's all you estimated, and every month you will work out exactly what you spent. And once you spent them, if there's anything that's different to what you expected it to be, you want to be looking at how come this expense is lower or higher than what I expected it to be. Why is it so? And that will tell you also, we'll look at your overheads, et cetera. We'll tell you, actually, I'm paying too much for this. Is there a cheaper supplier? So for example, um, at the accountancy place, we're an accountant. So we go through paper drastically, even though we try and things by email and sending things out. But paper is something that we go through reams and reams of. Yeah, and really, honestly, even though we're trying our best to reduce our paper, but it just doesn't work. Yeah, we need paper. <laughs> Things have to be printed out, etc. cetera. Um, and we found that, look, wow, why are we spending this? We're spending X amount on stationery. And we had the same stationer. And then somewhere along the line, our stationer decided to increase the prices of paper. They probably did tell us. Um, and we probably just didn't bother looking at what the price increase was. And then we found that, the price was going higher and higher. We said, what's going on here? And then they said, oh, this is the price they had told us. And we had just went to the same supplier, same paper, uh, paying substantially more than what we were doing. But then we knew what we were playing. Then we went to someone else. This is what we pay for our paper. Um, can you come down? It went down by almost 50%. But that can only be done when you scrutinize your expenses, just like you did for the personal budget. Um, and same, you would do the same exercise for business it's something that can be done and remember this is one of the overhead exercises that we did that issues with overheads this is what will happen now if you can plan for your cash you can do this now that sounds difficult right but when you break it down seriously it can be done now i know that many people said that they can understand it if there's any questions ask me now on the chat box um about 
doing this cash flow, etc. Because I'm then going to move on to a, another example of a cash flow. Anyone got any questions at the moment? Are we all okay? I'll have a sip of water. Okay, good. Right, we're going to move on. I think everyone is okay. Um, good, and I think... Have I lost everyone? Honestly, um, yeah, okay, if that, I'll give you five minutes. Uh, Florence is there, great. Okay, Kieran, great. Good to know that I've not lost people, that you're still with me. Um, and I think that this is me, okay. Okay, Costas, look, what I've said, yeah, absolutely. You made a point that things do vary and my example is very simplified but you would estimate what you would be because you would estimate that what do I, sales do I want to be? And then you would estimate what your expenses would be according to your sales, et cetera, especially materials, lab bills, et cetera. Um, and then you would monitor it every month that actually the sales that I expected, uh, what did they match? I expected based on my sales figure, I expected to pay this amount of lab bills. Um, did that match? And if my sales have gone up, obviously my lab bills have gone up. Um, if your sales haven't gone up, your lab bills have gone up, you'd want to know why. Or if your lab bills are what you thought they would be, but your sales are less, you'd also want to know why. And the same sort of thing happens to um, Peggy. Absolutely. I'm a service business, okay, so just like yourself. So services, we do do a lot of utilities, etc. cetera. Um, and we do a lot of stationery. And there are other things in our businesses which we have to control. We need to anticipate that, look, this is what's going on. Yeah, so stock is not a problem for service businesses, but for some other businesses, stock is a problem. But absolutely, but these are the sort of things that we need to do. Okay, so I'm going to move on now. Let's do look at another example. Okay, so this is an example. Um, both examples are people who are on this webinar. Okay, so these examples are live examples that we took. Now, there's a new business. Um, it's a new cosmetic product which has come from Malaysia. Um, this product um, is sold in 50-odd countries of the world. Um, it's come to the UK and someone has taken over the UK, um, making this for the UK, right? Make, they, they become distributor of this product in the UK. The product is a cosmetic product, it's a herbal product, it's a vegan product, et cetera, et cetera. It's got a lot of ticks. It's, it's grown in X amount of countries in the world. It's come to the UK. Um, and people wanted to know that if I joined this business, um, because this business allows people to join, etc., cetera, uh, would I be making a profit? And how? And it's the sort of business that people could start at home and grow, etc. So this is what the thing was, that there is something called a diamond package. You would buy the diamond package. And for this diamond package of £665, you will receive 14 products, okay? They do two items, and it's up to you. Get seven of each, etc. And once you've bought the diamond package, you can then buy future monthly products. You have to buy two at least every month. The two in total will cost you £75. That's the sort of information. Um, and this person aims to become something called a mobile stockist in this business. So they get 40 products um, and they will, um, I think they get 40 sets. So it's 80 products actually. Um, it's 3,600 pounds. So items are sold. They got a recommended retail price of 65 pounds per item. And there are some bonuses which are paid on sales and, ad and team uh, building, et cetera. So as you build your team, et cetera, it's not a pyramid scheme. We looked into this sort of thing. So it was some genuine by Malaysia company and there are some admin expenses. So the question was, um, could this business, the cybers make me some money? So this is how we put the cash flow together. Okay, um, so every month, we have months going down the side, one to 12. Okay, so we want to know, right, how many sales do, how many units do you think we're going to sell of this product every month? Okay, so we did it, uh, we, oops, sorry. Okay, 
we decided to um, sit down, have a look at how many units are sold every month. Now, obviously, you start off small. You start, you think that in the first month you sell four, then you sell six, and then you sell eight. Um, you build it up, and as your team gets used to, your team grows, your customers grow. Um, this product has great reviews, so you know that people are going to use it. They're going to come back to you. They'll use more and more of it. They'll tell their friends, etc. So this product, as it has grown in other countries, has the potential to grow. And so we sat down and we said, look, this is what you will have to um, exactly. Okay, so it's all there for you. Estimated on what we anticipate in sales. Remember, when we started, before we started in month one, we became we paid six hundred and sixty five pounds. You get fourteen products. So every month you have to buy two products as a minimum. So in month one we bought two. In month two we bought two. In month three we bought two, and then in month four, okay. So remember we had fourteen to begin with. We sold four in month one and had ten left over, and then in month two we had six, and then in month three uh, we sold eight. But then we uh, we had we we had already bought two, two, two every month. So we managed to do this. Um, so in month four, we sold 16, but we only had to buy 10 because we already had six in stock. Then going forward, you know, we buy what we thought we were going to sell until we come to month eight, seven or eight, etc., whereby we decide to go for the mobile stockist and we then have 80 units and that's cost 3,600 pounds. Okay, so this is what we decide to do just to make sure that we're matching um, our units sold units purchased to our units sold and this is what we anticipate doing so cash sales remember they were 65 pounds per unit so we sold four units two sets as they're called in this business in the month one in month two and and then go accordingly okay so we sold six eight 16 24 32 etc as we grew we we're selling more and more and they're sold at 65 pounds you can do this. Yeah, 65 pounds, that's what they are. So four units at 65 pounds is 260 pounds, six units at 65 pounds, 390 pounds. You put all of that in the cash flow. So units sold, cash sales. Similarly, remember, we put how many we purchase. So initially, we purchased the diamond package, we give us products of 14, which was 60, 665 pounds. And then every month we buy, we bought two, in month two, month three, we bought two, et cetera, et cetera. So we worked out what we need to buy and the prices are there, 75 pounds until we get to month eight, et cetera, where we're buying this mobile stockist package of 3,600 pounds. And then we need to buy 46, 90, 110. Now, all done at 75 pounds. That information is estimated sales, estimated purchases to match those. We put it together. Now, there's very little admin expenses and there were some bonuses, et cetera, that you get paid, et cetera. So you end up with a spreadsheet, okay? So that top bit is just what we've done. It's just the receipts, okay? Uh, we've added some bonuses on this. I'm not going to go through the bonus calculations, but that's how the bonuses would work. Okay, so this um, business, yeah, um, starts off with, um, you know, that's what it does. It has some cash sales. Every month you get paid cash. There's no credit here. Um, there's bonuses that you get paid. And you have, at, at the end of 12 months, you will receive £42,595. Remember, purchases, very simple. Diamond package was £665. The mobile stock is £3,600. And then you have your monthly purchases, which is based on the units sold. You had a little bit of admin expenses, not much. Okay, but the admin expenses go up as you go, are getting more and more. But then you have the cash flow. Now, this cash business, okay, so let's have a look at this. At the end of 12 months, right, you end up with £17,330. Just as a part time business, £17,330. Okay, and the only money that you really need to find is the £665 to begin with. Because if you can find the £665, pounds to begin with okay by the time you become a mobile stockist 3600 pounds you've already got in the bank 4045 at month seven which allows you to buy in month eight 3600 pounds to spend that money 
Okay, and if you can end up with seventeen thousand three hundred and thirty pounds, yeah, what does that mean? That means that ideally, even if you wanted to roll this forward to year two, very soon, in this business, you could actually take off what's known as a master stockist. So they give you a territory, and the ter uh, it's cost about eighteen thousand pounds. You've already got seventeen thousand three hundred thirty pounds. I know you haven't taken money out for yourself, but it's generated money. But in year two, in a few months' time, you do, if you didn't want to do it straight away and you took some money out, um, you could still, you know, like in year two, very few some in the three or four months, um, absolutely take over, um, take over a master stock is, is a huge opportunity. That's how you do your cash flow to work out whether your business is going to be successful, how you can put plans together. Okay, so again, that spreadsheet there sounds daunting with all these numbers, and that's what puts a lot of people off. But when we break it down, it isn't difficult, and that's something that you can do. And this is what RFE, why it's so successful in 50-odd countries, why there's no excuse for it not to be um, successful in the UK. It can be done. It's just a case of getting those sales right, you, pu you purchase accordingly, um, and the sales really not difficult to do and um, the product if it's a if the product says what it does do herbal natural has a lot of good properties on it a lot of good testimonials etc and this is why it's successful in 50 odd countries so people joining it in the uk would obviously have this opportunity similar opportunity as well so that's all about cash flow now does that make sense before we move on now, can you really honestly believe that numbers, you don't really need to be frightened by numbers and you can make this a success? Okay. Yeah, it needs a bit of practice, needs a bit of patience and we're coming to an answer to this later on as well. I'm gonna offer you something. Okay, good. Okay, so I think most of you can make sure that you can get here. You can make this, um, you will be able to make this a success. Okay, and I've shown you that numbers can do this and how you can ascertain whether a business is going to be workable and how successful it can be. Yeah, and you know where it's going to be, where you're going to need cash, etc. So now we're going to move on to how you improve your cash flow. Okay, and remember, Important thing is, right, very, very important, right, before we actually move on, that doing a cash flow is vitally important, okay? You really need to know because you need to know, you need to get to this stage, you need to know when you're going to have a credit problem. And there will be problems, okay? And But as long as you know when it's going to be, you can do something about it. Because if you're going to spend X amount on a campaign, etc., you need to know, yeah, I'm going to spend this, I need to generate this money, but I know that I'll get it back, et cetera, later on. But you can do something about it. And that's what we're going to do next. Now, how do you improve your cash flow? Okay, where are we up to? Improving cash flow. Okay, so we're going to be looking at improving cash flow now. So we've looked at cash flow problems. We've looked at overcoming the things. Now, sort of things that we can make sure that we put into place to improve our cash flow. And then after with this, we're going to be looking at where we can raise some finances. So this section, a small section about how we can improve cash flow. Um, any ideas about how to curve cash flow? I'm trying to make it interactive. I want you all to be involved in this. I want you to, so use a chat box. Give me some ideas of how you think that we can improve cash flow. Even if some of you mentioned before, mention it again. Um, it'll be good for people to read. It'll be good for, um, absolutely, for people to see what it is okay jenny loan from the bank yeah <coughs> that's not improving cash flow jenny but that's an answer okay that's overdraft we're looking at improving cash flow overdraft yeah absolutely angela good loan overdraft that improves cash flow because you've got the money in and so therefore it's, it does help the cash flow any other suggestions quoting a bit higher absolutely steven i mentioned invoice discounting etc right at the beginning when the question was asked Develop a 99 pound service of products. Okay, Suzanne, that's a great idea. And it's something that many of us don't um, think about, to be honest. Um, 
I'll come back to your idea in a minute, Suzanne. Great idea. Bridging loan. Okay. Uh, sale anything that is not being used. Absolutely. If you can add chain, you're doing well. That If you've got any stock in there or anything else which is not selling, etc., sell it. Generate the cash. You don't really want it to be tied up. Okay. So let's have a look at how do you improve cash flow. Okay. First thing, right? Making more money is not going to solve your cash flow problem. Right. So let's get that out of the way. It's a lot of people think that what they can do is they can make more money. Yeah. And that will solve the cash flow problem. If you're making more money, are you doing more sales? But if your sales are on credit, or if those sales are from bad debts, it's not going to improve your cash flow. Okay. So we need to be careful that what we're doing here is that we are, um, and that's a quote by Robert. Um, who's read Robert's book, by the way? Anyone's read Robert's book? Anyone know the name of Robert's book? He's written a very famous book, which I'm going to recommend to anyone who's business to read it. Okay, Kieran's read it. Christine, you've read it and you're absolutely right. Okay, so that is the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay, he's written a book. It's a business book. Okay, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I recommend any, any everyone to read that book if you're in business. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It really is. It's a nice read and it gives you a lot of tips and a lot of real life stories in there about Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay, it really is. Um, it's worth reading. Okay, so he's a, a really well-known business guru again. Um, well-known, written a lot of articles. His books is one of the top bestsellers of business books. And he said, making more money will not solve your problems if cash flow management is your problem. So the first thing is, is the things that we've done before. The cash flow management side of things we need to put into place. Now, what we need to do is speed up the receipt of cash. Okay, anything that we can do, like we talked about the two percent deposit incentives or anything else, or um, two percent discounts, or asking for a deposit, etc. Anything that speeds up receipt of cash, receipt of the money, you receiving the monies, is going to help your cash flow, and that's what you need to do. Okay. So the first thing that a lot of people get this wrong, as soon as you've done the work, yeah, whether it's a service or whether it's a product, you send your invoice out ASAP, more or less effectively with the product, with the service, etc. You send it out. Okay, so you send it out. Don't um, uh, wait for it. Just send it out ASAP because the sooner, the no one's going to pay you unless they receive an invoice from you. So the sooner you send that invoice to them, the more chances that you have of um, of um, getting paid. If you can reduce your payment terms to a lower period, absolutely talk to them individually. Um, a lot of customers, especially at this day and age now, after the COVID period, um, hopefully after the COVID period, even though it's not looking great at the moment, but hopefully we, fingers crossed, things will get better. Um, people are willing to support small businesses. So just because traditionally they've done 60 days, they've done 30 days, et cetera, go to them and speak to them. Is there any chance you could pay me within 10 days, within seven days? And there's a lot of people and they understand that they've been in the same situation you are. And a lot of people will pay you, even without asking you, offering you a discount, et cetera, they will pay you sooner. So it's worth asking, but you do have to ask. And don't be, don't be scared of asking. Remember anything that's joy, that, um, Speeds up cash received. Um, absolutely, you'll get paid sooner. So invest in a card machine. Because obviously, I know a lot of people still pay by bank transfer, etc. But if someone comes to you, um, I'll pay you, I'll go home and I'll go to my office and pay you by thing. If they're with you, you can say to them, can I um, have a card machine? Yeah, If you have a card machine, there and then, swipe the card. It costs you a bit of money, but at least the money is you could receive the money. Okay, and these days you can have all sorts of different machines to do so. And you can have some things which work off your connected to your mobile phone. So they're mobile enough for you to travel around with if you're doing fairs, et cetera, or going somewhere else to exhibitions, that sort of thing. You don't want them to say, I haven't got the cash or um, we'll send it to the invoice. Oh, I've got a card machine here. You can swipe your card because that's the way the future is going. So look at card machines. Okay. The other thing is, now we talked about using a card machine to receive a payment, 
the other thing that you can do, and it's something that if you really are, and you should look into this, is use a, use a business credit card to make payments. Now, why would you want to use a business credit card to make payments? Think about this. Anyone got any ideas why I would want to use my business credit card to make payments? Okay, so remember, we talked about having a card machine to receive payments, so we get payments quicker. Yeah, and don't worry, uh, anyone who's be, um, losing, trying to take some notes, you will get a copy of the presentation, and you will also um, receive a recording that we of this presentation as well. Okay, why do we want to use business credit card? To avoid late fees, taxes. No, we're using a business, we're using a credit card to make payments. Why do we want to use a business credit card? Okay, think about when I use my credit credit card. Okay, so credit score. Okay, Stephen, you're gonna create yeah, by using a credit card, you increase um your credit's history, etc. That helps. But think about it. Okay, Jenny's on the day, you get more days. Absolutely, Jenny. You're on, you're that that's the that's the thing. Think about it. You can make a payment to your suppliers by credit card. Okay, so you've made it on credit card. When do you pay your credit card? Okay, so if I made a payment from my bank, I pay it goes from my bank straight away. When I use my credit card, by the time I use it and by the time I get my bill, I'm gonna have at least almost a month before I need to pay my credit card, 21 days at least or 30 days. Yeah, so I'm making the money goes from my bank 30 days later or 21 days later. You get more time to make a payment. If I can delay making money leaving my bank account, it actually helps me with my cash flow. Yeah, so if I know that I'm someone's going to pay me in 30 days, I can pay my credit card knowing that I'm going to receive money in 30 days and then I'll pay my credit card off. Okay, so that's why using a credit card can be useful for cash flow purposes. Remember, a credit card does need to be cleared. You do need to pay for it on time. You don't want to be incurring any interest, etc. Okay, and if you do have credit card debt, um, try and look, wipe that out as soon as possible. Credit card debt is normally more expensive. Um, and what I've done recently with a couple of people was looking at a credit card. They had mounted a credit card debt, and they were in a position to pay the whole of the amount of the credit card off, and the interest was getting ridiculous. But we did manage to shift the credit card balance to another credit card, which offered zero interest for, I think it was a 12 month period. So they're going to have 12 months to pay the credit card off without at least accru accruing any more interest. But better, the best thing is to try and pay off every month. So your credit history is absolutely fine. But that's why you would use a credit card. Honestly, it would, it gives you um, some respite. It, the money doesn't leave your bank account, so you've got a longer period before the money leaves your bank account, and maybe you can match it up with your receipts. Now, strange one, yeah, I'm going to say to you, and this is the one that a lot of people don't think about, and it doesn't come up in whenever I ask this question, is stay friendly with your bank manager. Really, honestly, I know that we have one ex-bank manager with us, and Navid is with us here today. Stay friendly with lenders, okay? You'll be surprised that once you are friendly with your bank manager, you get to know them. If they invite you to an event at the bank, please do go and visit them. Uh, most banks do have some sort of some some sort of person called a business bank manager who's there looking after businesses, etc. Um, they do have some discretion, okay? So if you need to have an overdraft or you need to get a loan, if you're well known to them, especially if it's a short-term loan, et cetera, they will look at that more favorably. So absolutely stay with them, okay? And if you know that you're going to have a cash flow forecast by letting them know in advance that you're going to have some sort of cash forecast, can you help them out? They know that you're actually on the ball. You're not coming to them at last minute saying that, oh, my bank, I'm not going to have enough money to pay something. I need some in three days. You say that, look, I've done some work. I want to do some uh, business. It's going to cost me X amount of money. I need a loan or an overdraft for three months in two months' time, et cetera. 
um, the, because you've done it in advance um, and you can show them, demonstrate to them that this is why you're doing it, they will look at that very, very friendly rather than having a crunch because so many people come to me when they have a problem. And when it's a problem, it's really difficult to get out of. And this is why so the why is the number one reason for businesses failing. It's too late. We need to tackle cash flow right at the beginning. Sooner we do it, the better it will be for all of us. Okay. So also um, accountants, yes, yeah, stay. We like to keep um, all our any any of our clients who um, struggle with cash flow speak to us. We will be more than happy to um, go through all, all the things with you, having a look at what's available, um, maybe able to offer you some advice on how you can overcome. And obviously, if you're going for a loan or anything else, you're going to need some cash flow projections, et cetera, which they, the banks need to know about. So that sort of thing, we would always help you with. And it's always worth keeping in touch with your accountant. Okay, so I get a mention there for myself. Okay, finding finance, the last section today. Okay, first of all, the tips that we've done to improve cash flow, have they made sense to you? Yeah, say yes or no. Just let me know if they made sense to you that look, the sort of things that we can do to improve cash flow has made sense to you. Absolutely, let me know. So we know where we are up to. Okay, I'm getting a few yeses. I hope that's yeses for... Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Right. Okay. Now, last section for today. We want to look at where do you find finance? Okay. So obviously we've looked at somewhere on the line of cash flow. We are going to need some money. Right. There's no doubt about that. We are going to need some finances. Now, obviously, the traditional finance was go to the bank. And that's always always there. But we're living in a different world now whereby there's a lot more financing opportunities than ever before. And I want to share a few with you today. Uh, this is the last section before we finish off today. So we're on time. We're doing well. Um, okay. Financing. Okay. So think about alternative finances to bank loans. So I want you to share, put in the chat box, if you've got an alternative to raising finance other than a bank loan. Put it in the chat box. Put some ideas in. Okay, think about where can you raise some finance without going to the bank. Okay, we've got some borrowing from another borrowing from another company, sponsorship, government grants, relatives, friends partnerships, joint ventures. Okay, selling things that you don't need. Absolutely. That's coming up. Great ideas, man. Susanna, Aching, Kaitsi, Navid, Costas, Suzanne, schemes for tax investments, crowdfunding with a question mark, Angela. Okay. Navid has got crowdfunding. Okay. So Angela's asked a question about crowdfunding. Okay. We'll look at that in a minute. Okay. I think we've got some good ideas there. Okay, so, right, so, um, oh, some great, we've got the Leon model, etc. Okay, so raising finance. Yeah, we all need some finance somewhere along the line. Okay, but banks obviously are there, and bank loans are there, and that's one avenue that you can explore. And um, interest rates are fairly low at the moment. So if you do need to go down a bank loan, you can go down a bank loan. But I want to look at alternatives, which probably didn't exist, you know, until very recently. And I really want to do this. The first one is crowdfunding. So a lot of people ask for crowd, what is crowdfunding? Angela asked the question. Crowdfunding is where you ask raising money by asking, um, you ask a large amount of people for a small investment. Okay, that's really literally what it is. That's what crowdfunding is. A crowd, you're raising funds from a crowd. So does it work? Yeah. Um, the answer to this is crowdfunding is becoming very, very, very popular. Okay. And there are different ways of crowdfunding. There's donation crowdfunding, there's equity crowdfunding, and there's also debt crowdfunding. But this is where you are going to a lot of smaller people, um, a lot of crowd people, and asking them for a small amount of money. Um, when we say a small amount of money, look, it's not just a few hundred pounds. 
crowdfunding is now becoming huge. I mean, there are people doing raising funds of millions on crowdfunding. Yeah, literally millions. Yeah, there are people who are doing raising all the finance on crowdfunding, and there's different ways. So remember, there are three sort of different crowdfundings. One is donation or reward crowdfunding. This is where you really have a cause, which is which people buy into, etc., and they will give you something for your cause, etc. Okay, and you will give them maybe a free gift or some acknowledgement, small gifts that are really there. And a lot of small businesses are using this to their advantage. They will say, look, we're opening a bakery in our local uh, village, etc. Would you be willing to support us? If you give us a hundred pounds, we'll say a thank you to you. If you give us 200 pounds on your birthday, we'll give you a cake, etc. So small things, but these small offers do start adding up. Okay, so and there are people who do this and they've raised a few hundred typically small business 20, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. Donation reward crowdfunding, not a huge problem. Equity crowdfunding this is where people um, invest in your business, they take a stake in your business, um, or, um, normally for some small percentage of shares, but again for doing so they take a huge amount of money they they the funding here is quite huge especially if you've got a track record or you can show that you've got something unique etc the um, equity crowdfunding works in millions yes yeah, so a small but you are giving a small part of your business away or they take a stake in your business and when they get paid out they will exit them but they will supply you with the funding that you need at the moment debt crowdfunding is debt okay this is where uh, not the traditional banks, but other financial institutions, other individuals will say, I'm interested in your idea. I'll give you a loan for this. And what they normally do is give you a loan, which is cheaper than the bank. Okay. So that's what it's called debt crowdfunding. So where do you go for your crowdfunding? Okay. So crowdfunding, if you do a internet search, you'll find lots and lots of different ones. And um, some of the more famous crowdfunding sites in the UK One's called crowdfunder.co.uk. Cedars um, is another one. Crowdcube is another one. Zopa, or Zupa, the way, whichever way you want to pronounce it, is where you'll find a lot of people willing to give you um, loans, etc. So it's crowdfunding, it's loans, it's not banks, it's individuals or groups of people who have got pots of money, they like the idea, and they will get some reward for investing in your business, etc. Zupa. They normally, all of these things are work out cheaper alternatives to um, banks. Okay, so have a look at it. Crowdfunding, it does work. Family and friends. Someone mentioned this family and friends. Absolutely. You can ask your family and friends to support you and you you got this business venture. Can you borrow me X amount of money and I'll pay you back? Yeah, it does work, but I'm going to put a warning on this, right? Seriously, a warning. You can do this, right? no problem at all. And many people will turn to their friends and family to help them fund their new venture. Okay, but what I'm going to tell you is something very, very important. If you go down this route, make sure that you have a written agreement, exactly what's involved. Are they giving you a loan? Are they investing in your business? When do you expect to pay them back? Et cetera, et cetera. This has to be written down because there are, unfortunately, a lot of problems that happen when you borrow from family and friends and then um, their understanding was a bit different. They borrow you today in two weeks time. They say, well, I need that money back. Can you pay me? And you really have invested that money and you don't have the means to pay them back for a few months. So write it down. So it avoids any problems. And are they giving you a loan? Are they investing in your business? Because some people I've come across this in my life and, you know, like with dealing with my clients where some people have given them money and they thought that they were actually buying a share of the business and they were expecting a certain percentage on the profits of the business where the other person thought it was just um, um, a loan which they would pay back. Yeah, you need to have a written agreement. So it just helps having written it down. Great idea. It can be done, but just write it down. Because you you just don't want to be breaking up with family and friends, okay? Because it does turn sour. We want to avoid that sort of situation. 
So family and friends, great idea. Just out of curiosity, how many people have in their business venture have borrowed money from family and friends? Just write yes in the in the chat box. If you borrow money from family and friends for your business or anything else, you borrow money from family and friends, say yes. Okay, so Kevin is being honest with us. He said yes. Yeah, okay, now we got Vinola. Yeah, okay, so now we're getting the yeses coming through. Absolutely. Vinola, Christine, it is absolutely. You know what happens? It's probably one of the more prominent, it's probably um, we, a lot of us do ask family and friends, right, um, to do so. Um, and some people wouldn't want to do so for the reasons that I've outlined there. You don't want them involved in your business. It causes problems. And you really, some people say, look, I don't want anyone in my family involved in my business. I don't want to really be asking them, um, asking them for any sort of help at all. And that happens as well. Okay. So family and friends is there. Startup loans. Now you'll be surprised. There is something called startup loans. Okay. And you have really two choices. The government has a startup loans. It's called startuploans.co.uk. It's the government loan, which they offer to um, fund businesses, etc. cetera. Um, now, when you look at this site, okay, the interest rate is 6%, okay? So it's not great, but it is, yeah, it's 6%, right? Um, they offer you 25,000 pounds. Okay, you can say you can apply up to £25,000. The reality is that most people only get about £6,000 in my experience. Okay, so people have applied. The loan has to be paid back within five years. Um, it's about £6,000, right, that you will get. There is um, an equivalent of this done by Richard Branson, the Virgin um, startup loan as well. Again, they offer something very, very similar. I think the interest rate is a bit less. It's about 5%. Again, they talk about 25,000, but most people end up with getting a loan on average about 6,000 pounds. And that's the Virgin startup loan. So there is some startup loan. So some people say, well, my business is new. Do they, will it qualify for a bank? The bank is saying no, because it's um, a new business. The banks are not interested in doing though, unless I give them some collateral, some sort of um, deposit, et cetera. I'm signing up some, I don't really want to do that. I want to have an unsecured loan. So startup loans, Virgin um, loan as well. Those sort of loans are available for startups. There are others, but obviously there are two more famous ones. Lastly, but not least, I want you to explore this opportunity is grants. Now grants, there are grants out there, but they're not huge grants, okay? And they're not for everything and anything. They are grants, grants are taxable, okay? Um, there is a business a government website, and that's the website, gov.uk business finance, business dash finance dash support. You'll get the URL when I send the presentations to you. Um, you will get, it sets, it lists all the grants available in your area and for a particular reason and who's giving those grants away. So you can apply for grants. They What the government does, it doesn't pay the grants directly to you. Is set aside some money. That money goes to um, local organizations. You apply to your local organization. The local organization will say that we've got grants for ABC. If you want ABC or if you're interested in ABC, apply to us. So there are, this is, happens throughout the country. So that's what happens. Look at it. Now, grants, the benefit of grants, it doesn't need to be repaid. Remember, that's the difference between a grant and a loan. Even though grants are income and they're taxable, but they don't have to be repaid at all, yeah? They just don't have to be repaid. So grant is always good for you. So you're getting the money in, okay? You It's income for you. You Obviously, if you spent it, you've got the expense equivalent, so it's not gonna be taxable. It's not gonna make too much difference. But yeah, it doesn't need to be repaid. So you're not having to repay. You're not trying to find some money to pay it back like you do with a loan. So it doesn't set aside a debt for you to pay back. So grants, have a look at those. That's where we're off today. So I'm going to finish here. So we're almost 12.30. Absolutely. I said we'll finish before one o'clock. So this is where we are. So if anyone wants any help, there's our details. Now, um, just stay with me one minute. I need to uh, 